good old. I hope you all are safe and sound. Today will be my lecture number 40th. And this is about the MAIB case study of collision which took place in the Straits of Gibraltar. So far, I have been broadcasting uh, in past quite a few uh, case studies. And I would ask you all to please come back with your opinions and uh, what do you think about it? Is it helping us any which way? Because what all I have been doing so far for past one and a half year is to share the practical experience of mine, my command experience, as well as uh, to share with you all the intricacies involved. So we begin with the lecture number 40, which is the case study, MAIB case study on collision, which took place in the Straits of Gibraltar. The subject vessels, the two subjects vessels were one was a container vessel, which was eastbound, and the other was the gas carrier, which was westbound. The container vessel, uh, which was eastbound, was ANL Wyong, as you can see on your screen, uh, on your screen, and the gas tanker, which was westbound, was King Arthur. And this happened in the approaches of Algeciras, that is Spain, on 4th of August 2018. So, before we proceed with any further, let's try to look into the environmental, st uh, you know, status. The external and internal environmental status, the wind velocity was 10 to 15 knots. Current was northeasterly at two knots, and the visibility was darkness, dense or thick fog. On the container vessel, the total number of complement was 22, and on gas tanker, the total number of complement were 18. Both vessels were traversing in the restricted visibility, as what I mentioned earlier. The container vessel. ANL Wyong was eastbound and the gas tanker, the King Arthur, was westbound. So the damages were sustained by both the vessels. As you can see, the gash on the port quarter of the container vessel and the damage to the gas tanker on her bow on the port side. The particulars of both the vessels, AL and ANL Wyong and the King Arthur are, you know, depicted over here. I will just read out the salient things. First and foremost, you know, the IOM number of the, uh, the ANL Wyong was 9334155 and IMO number for the gas tanker King Arthur was 9480382. The length overall of the container vessel, which was a big vessel, was 260 meters. And the length overall for the gas tanker was 103 decibel, 9 meters. Now, this incident, as what we talked about, took place in, uh, in the Straits of Gibraltar. That is in latitude 36 degrees, 0, 4 decibel, 1 north. And Longitude 005 degrees 16 decimal 6 west. It was approximately four miles southeast of Europa Point, that is, of course, Gibraltar. The synopsis of the whole thing, what we talk about, first I'm going to go through what actually happened, what were the facts, uh, you know, the statements of facts, and then we talk about the recourse. On six, uh, at 0636 hours on 4th of August 2018, the UK registered container vessel ANL Wyong and the Italian registered gas tanker King Arthur collided approximately four nautical miles 
southeast of Europa Point. That is Gibraltar. Both vessels were damaged, but there was no pollution or injury. That was a you know a good thing which happened that nobody was injured and no damage to the environment, and everybody on board was safe. But the damage to the property, the vessels that did take place. The collision occurred in the darkness, dense fog, as what we said earlier during the environmental thing, what we talked about. The collision occurred in the darkness, dense fog, and in an area of heavy shipping traffic density. As you know, Gibraltar States is a very heavy traffic density area where the caution, prudence, and due diligence shall be exercised as far as the safety of navigation is concerned. <clears throat> the collision occurred in darkness, then fog, and in an area of heavy traffic uh, density or tra shipping traffic. Anal Wyong was stopped, having been given direction by the Algeciras pilots to wait outside Gibraltar Bay. And King Arthur, which was westbound, was making way towards a boat transfer position inside Gibraltar. In other words, in a rendezvous position where she was supposed to carry out the personal provision, uh, personal transfer, and even maybe take some provision, etc., etc., et something like miscellaneous. But the point which I'll again read out that, you know, uh, in dense fog and in heavy traffic shipping uh, lanes, ANL Wyong was stopped approximately, you know, four miles due southeast of Europa Point uh, because she was directed by the Algeciras Palace to wait outside Gibraltar. And King Arthur, as what is, I said earlier, was proceeding westbound for the personal uh, to pick up the crew transfer or uh, the boat transfer position for personal provision or miscellaneous. Now here, the things which actually occurred to me when I was going through the case study, you know, whatever it is, there are quite a few things which we'll talk about as we go by. But right now, as I have depicted here in my slide, that is the points to ponder. Number one, master. Number two, VTS. Number three, pilot. We'll talk about it as we go through the next slides. Now, few, uh, nuts, in nutshell, King Arthur's master was calling an altered course to starboard, intending to pass a stern of ANL Wyong. <coughs> Although King Arthur master could not see ANL Wyong, his assessment of the situation was <coughs> primarily based on AIS data. Now, this is something which we must be careful about. I think I've already broadcast and I'm, you know, uh, talking uh, in a lot of podium regarding teaching or trying to do more mentorship for the officers, especially as far as the, you know, to exercise prudence towards the safety of navigation. The AIS, you see, in this particular case also, the master's assessment uh, uh, was based on the primarily on the automatic AIS data. However, ANL Wyong was stopped in water, not making way, as the King Arthur master had perceived. Now, all this, what he had perceived, was through the AIS data. Probably he did not monitor or did not carry out the continuous monitoring of the targets through the ARPA. As a result, the decision of King Arthur to starboard actually had the effect of putting the vessel on a collusion course. When the King Arthur master realized that a dangerous situation was developing, full starboard rudder was applied. However, this action came too late. In other words, this action was too late and too little at that point of time. To prevent the collision, in a Wyong officer of watch was monitoring the situation but took no action when it became apparent that a multiple close quarter situations were unfolding. Because besides these two vessels, as we talked about earlier and we have been through umpteen number of times, many of our mariners, my colleagues, that besides these two subject vessels, the container and the gas carrier, there were lots of other vessels traversing through the TSS east or west bound respectively. Now, this is the position where the collision took place. Ian Alvayo 
was coming from Dola, that is Cameroon, to Algeciras, Spain. She was supposed to pick up the pilot, and as depicted in the previous slides, she was asked by the pilot to stay approximately four miles due southeast of, of uh, Europa Point and do not enter the Gibraltar Bay. On the other hand, the King Arthur from, was coming from Kulevi, that is Georgia, to Algeciras, Spain, again to a position somewhere here where she was supposed to go and, you know, do the, uh, the for the boat transfer to, for the PF personal or for provision, whatever it was, the miscellaneous sites. And this is the place where the accident took place. This is the place where both the vessels collided. The original course of, as which we have seen in the previous slide, this is ANL Wyong's course line. The original coastline of the uh, Wyong was supposed to go this way and head directly towards the pilot boarding grounds for Algeciras. That is the original passage plan. But after she was told by the pilots to go southeast of the Europa point and wait there and do not enter the Gibraltar Bay, they altered or amended their passage plan and that's where she proceeded and you know uh, she basically was uh, stopped she had stopped stop means waiting for further instructions but make no mistakes you see you are already in the busiest lane and lots of traffic is passing up and down be uh, east west and there are a lot of ferries also which are crossing for north north and south uh, you know uh, channel uh, respectively in this particular area now the other thing you see there there are so many VTS reporting points. Algeciras port VTS information level service. Then you have a state of Gibraltar where we do the gym rep, the traffic, uh, tarifa traffic VTS uh, sector information level service, the strait of Gibraltar gym rep, uh, gym rep and the Tanger VTS sector. Then you have uh, Gibraltar VTS up to navigation assistance service. You, you, what I'm trying to say, there's so many VTS services which are involved, which was supposed to monitor and guide the vessels. And mind you, in this particular case, it was a restricted visibility area, dense, thick fog, perhaps zero visibility. Now, we'll talk about this here, this particular thing also uh, uh, later. These are the things what I'm talking about to, you know, make an appraisal that what all were the probably the contributing factors but under no circumstances would it relinquish both the masters uh, obligation towards the safety of navigation and exercise due diligence and prudence respectively what we said earlier different bts uh, coverage areas which have been shown and then end of the day we see just under their nose this accident location where the collision took place. Now, the conclusions which have been uh, depicted or have been chalked out in the MAIB report, I'll go through it one by one. The accident happened because neither bridge team appreciated the risk of collision in sufficient time to take effective action to pass at the safe distance. Number two, when the shipping situation deteriorated and the serious risk of collision developed, ANL Wyong OW took no action to avoid collision. This primarily because of his perception that the other vessels would be clear. Why? Because INL Wyong was stopped and the duty also was on bridge and I, I don't know why Master also was not there with him because the engines probably were ready to maneuver she had stopped maybe for a very short notice that has not been uh, you know uh, reflected in the report but this is what i understand what i perceive point number three the king awesome art arthur master uh, the king arthur master perceived that anl wyong was making way in the southwesterly direction when the vessel was actually stopped in the water just Try to understand this point. The King Arthur Master perceived ENL Wyong was making way in southwesterly direction when the vessel was actually stopped in the water. 
This misconception was based on the AIS information. This point you must remember, take home. That for all of the CAS mode, during the collision avoidance mode, of course, EIS gives us lots of information, the length overall, the port of destination, lots of other things. But the AIS shall never be used for collision avoidance system. It should be the vector through the ARPA. That should be used. Going back to the basics, you know. So this mistake was based on the AIS information and resulted in the alteration of course to starboard intended to pass a stern of ANL Vion, but actually which resulted in a serious risk of collision. Now, what I'm trying to say, the master of the King Arthur, his all decision, decisions were made on a kind of, a, uh, you know, wrong information or spurious information which he picked up because he was monitoring the movement of EN, uh, the, uh, the container vessel ENL Wyong's movement through the AIS. Probably he did not lock it on the ARPA. And actually she was stopped. And the current set was northeasterly. But what he perceived that the, the vessel, uh, the ENL Wyong is setting southwestern. As it is written over here. She was setting southwesterly uh, direction. This is what was perceived by the King Arthur Master. Point number four, by taking the cog himself in a very busy shipping area, the focus of King Arthur's master narrowed, reducing his ability to sustain full awareness of situation. Now here I've got a different opinion because in any critical passage or anywhere, uh, being the master, I rather prefer to be there when it is required and that goes in very busiest water. But then there's another recourse which we'll talk about as we go down. Perhaps what could have been done? And that is my humble suggestion if probably that would, had been done because that is what is expected as far as the practical seamanship is concerned. We'll talk about that. Neither vessel was proceeding at safe speed for prevailing circumstances and conditions. Now rule number six, safe speed, it says, you know, under, under the prevailing circumstances, the vessel should proceed at safe speed. Safe speed does not mean too fast, does not mean too slow, also does not mean stop. So it is as per the circumstances, under the given circumstances, what st uh, speed uh, uh, to be adopted to ensure that the vessel is safe afloat and there is no risk of collision. Point number six, neither vessel took sufficient action to avoid collision and pass at a safe distance because of being uh, complicit. Because one vessel was stopped, other vessel, uh, uh, the container vessel ANL wire was stopped. The DD officer thought like, you know, all the vessels will pass clear of him. But little did he realize that he's, uh, his vessel is in the busiest water and the length overall of ANL Wyong was, uh, was 260 meters. Uh, point number seven, the AS data for the gas collision avoidance by both vessels risk the misunderstanding and potentially inaccurate data on the relative movements of the other vessels. Again, AIS, as I say, is a good thing to get, you know, an overall view as far as the vessel is concerned. But for collision avoidance mode, AIS shall not be used. It should be only the CAS or the ARPA. Uh, under the CAS mode, ARPA should be used where, <coughs> as per the you know, movement on the PPI or the plant position indicator as per the actual physical movement of the target, it gives you the vectors, it gives you the speed after it is stabilized. Uh, point number eight, the use of VHF radio for collision avoidance was an unhelpful distraction in the particular the uh, conversation with the speed, uh, spread eagle because spread eagle it was another target which was coming out of the bay, Gibraltar Bay and there was a, uh, also a communication. Now the thing is that I have not taken all those uh, ships which were passing because there were quite a few ships were passing at that point of time. This is basically to focus on the subject matter of the incident of collision of between these two vessels. Neither vessel received any warning from the shore agencies responsible for providing information 
intended to improve onboard navigation decision making. Now, this is where uh, the question is raised towards the BTS and the shortways agencies, as what we saw in the previous slides, how many BTS or gym prep, all those were there, but probably nobody was uh, catering to give the vessel advice that, you know, she's running into collision or she has another vessel which is on a collision course with her. So that is where when I go back to my previous slide over here and I've depicted over here points to ponder. Number one, master. Number two, VTS. Number three, pilot. Now, coming to the next slide, this is where I believe with my professional opinion could have been done. First and foremost, the VTS should have been monitoring the situation very closely and admonishing the vessels in the vicinity which are coming close to each other giving them a word of caution which was not done number two the pilot says tells the uh, anl wire master that you wait four miles to your southeast of europa point well i'll tell you this is where the master decision making besides over and above king arthur's master was using uh, ai's data and probably the anl wire master or duty officer were using the same thing which we have already talked about but the practical seamanship where it, it, it is, uh, I've depicted in points first, the lapses on the VTS, what I just said that, you know, the VTS should have been closely monitoring and uh, giving a prompt or admonishing or advising the vessels, the ones which are coming close to each other, because first and foremost, it's a dense fog or zero visibility. Number two, pilot's instruction to proceed four miles to the southeast of Europa. Now, that's where the master's decision. What master could have done, he knows that ANR wire master that if he stops the vessel somewhere here, he is again in the middle of busiest traffic. If he had to proceed, this uh, ANR wire master had to proceed because he knows there's a delay in the pilot boarding time, and the pilots and the VTS has told him do not come inside the Gibraltar Bay. That is well understood and construed. But at that point of time, the master should have exercised the due diligence not to stop the vessel here. And that is where I've drawn this line here. This line here, I've said, if the vessel had to go up to here, he would have been clear of all the east and west traffic lane. Yeah, because I'll show you the previous slide where it stopped. And this is what I have drawn here between the red and green lines, the projected area or pr predicted area where they should have stopped. See, this is the place the collision took place. This is where Wyoming stopped. Wyoming is uh, with the coastline red color and King Arthur with the uh, coastline of green color. Now, going back to the same thing which I was on the slide, we are talking about this one. So, if the King Arthur Master would have proceeded further northeasterly and stopped somewhere in the same distance as under the prevailing circumstances, approximate drifting area, that is what I have marked. And on, uh, and on the other hand, if because what was happening, there was a delay for King Arthur when she was supposed to make a rendezvous with a boat somewhere here, as you can see my pointer, if there was a delay, the King Arthur Master should have also not proceeded into the high traffic and stay area. He also could have, uh, probably could have altered to northwesterly course and with a safe distance, keeping the engines ready and should have drifted. And there was no problem because honestly speaking, I have drifted a few times <coughs> when there was a delay in the pilot or a delay for some reason, maybe for pickup stores or provisions or whatever it was. If there was a delay, I will go away from the links, the shipping links, stop the uh, you know stop the vessel, inform the VTS, and that's it. I don't think any VTS will object to it unless, of course, there is some other restriction. But then this is situational. What the ANL wire master would have done, he would have come due more northeast, stopped in the safe area wherever he may feel you know, comfortable, stop the vessel and started to drift. Same thing, the AN, uh, the, uh, the gas carrier uh, King Arthur Master would have done the same thing because both these vessels were notified by the respective parties that there is a delay. The, the ANR wire was notified by the pilots that there is a delay in the pilot boarding time, so you go and drift you southeast of uh, Europa Point. But this is the master's discretion. It's a master's prerogative. The master of the ANR wire would have said, okay, fine. He would go more northeast, stop the uh, uh, engines over there, notify the pilot, notify the VTS, say, okay, whenever it is, give me one hour or two hours notice, 
I'll be there, make a rendezvous to the public voting grounds. And same thing, the King Arthur Master also would have done it. That in case, when he realized that there's a delay in the, you know, uh, with the boat for a few hours, he would have done the same thing. They are well clear of this traffic, shipping traffic area. So that is where the master's decision, decisiveness and overriding authority does matter. It does matter. And it has to be exercised judiciously, exercising prudence towards the safety of navigation, safety of crew, everything taking into con uh, consideration, including the, uh, the environmental protection policies, all these decisions <coughs> and all these, in, in fairness, they should have taken a call, whatever was uh, appropriate. Many times you don't have to, you know, like conquer to the pilot's advice, maybe he's wrong. Maybe he's got another ship to go on, like I'm giving you another example. That is where the master has to rise to the occasion. And this place, to be honest, which I, in my personal opinion or in my professional opinion, I would say both the masters did not exercise due diligence, did not have iota of practical uh, uh, seamanship as far as that is concerned, and misconception because of the wrong or op not optimizing the usage of the navigational aids. So, I mentioned here the both uh, both the vessels masters in efficacy for the situational awareness. Emergency contingency. They had no clue about emergency contingency when they're going into a critical passage like this. Uh, emergency contingency planning whilst traversing through the critical passages. Number four, exercising master's overriding authority and due diligence and prudence towards the safety of navigation, which was not done. These are, in my professional opinion, the main contributing factors where in case if they had to be exercised with due diligence, probably this kind of situation could have been averted. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching uh, my channel. Please do like and subscribe because henceforth onwards after studying and, you know, basically dissecting all these case studies, I will also be giving you a perspective as far as the practical knowledge, practical seamanship is concerned. Even in ROR also, the rule also does not, you know, uh, exonerate any one of us. There is a clause which says, at uh, you know, end of the day, the practical knowledge of the seamanship shall be applied to, and that's what comes with your experience. In this particular case, had the ma both the masters used or had been thoughtful enough to exercise, uh, you know, use their, uh, uh, let's say, uh, judgment correctly and uh, as what I've suggested and if they had to do stop the engine somewhere here going uh, WNL Wyong, uh, going more uh, to northeast and uh, the gas carrier uh, going more northwestly and stopped over there and, uh, you know, commenced drifting with the engines ready, notifying the port control VTS or pilot that, okay, we are drifting. And uh, for uh, the gas carrier notifying the board that, okay, if there's a delay, let us know. This would have easily averted because you're keeping well clear of the busiest traffic lane in the world. So, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for your time. Please do like, subscribe to the channel and come to me with all the doubts you may have. Thank you. Good day. God bless. Stay safe.